Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Saturday, March 27th, 10.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2021. The models are in, and it's looking like a sin for Canada, which is going to be buried in the global warming goodness through April. Take a look at the B.C. coast and even eastern Canada picking up on the fray. But the big story, severe weather shifts to the mid-Atlantic on Sunday. Hello, District of Columbia. Keep calm. It's boom time. Flooding reported as severe storms move through Middle Tennessee. Heads up, adapt. I hope you're not flooded out. Maryland weather, severe storms possible through much of the region Sunday afternoon. It will be a boom. Gusty storms, active night. Severe weather threat moves into Alabama. Heads up, Greens, Greg. I know you're north of there, but... Anything is possible. Most of North Carolina under level two severe weather risk on Sunday. Some counties reaching three. And you can see here up that goes into Virginia. Heads up, Virginia. Severe weather impacts in the Arc Latex Saturday evening. That's now. And that's a big boom for you guys in El Dorado. From snow to 60s. Yeah, that's up you, up in uh, Minnesota, say it ain't so. Uh, so uh, well, the warm-up is going to begin, but not after the snow has fallen right there. Just two or three inches, not a big deal. We're looking at 48 hours of powers in the Rockies. Good amount of snow in the high peaks, especially here in Nevada, where they need that moisture. And there you see the tippy touch of Maine picking up some of that snow. And more of it is coming up to 15 inches in northern Maine over just the next... Well, just the next few hours. Take a look at that. Boom. Let's walk this model through for you, shall we? And let's pause it. So here's your Sunday. What we're going to see is some heavy snow in northern uh, Wisconsin there and a little tippy touch in the mesh. And that Maine on Monday morning, Sunday night, Monday morning, that little strip's going to move through the northeast. A little bit of snow dumping down into PA, a little in upstate New York. But the west, take a look at those big totals. In Washington State, yes, hello. You're still skiing there in Oregon. More snow pumping in on Monday. There's the rest of your Monday. And we're entering Tuesday morning here as snow moves into western Montana, northern Idaho, and northwestern Wyoming. Say it ain't so me. It's not. And it's pretty moderate pattern. A little bit more of a pump in the northeast Thursday, Friday, the beginning of April. So it's not, it's going to look, it's going to feel very seasonal there, meaning it's going to be way out of season. Uh, but huge amounts of snow covering the entire prairie here up in Canada. I hope they're not getting ready to do anything there because they're certainly not going to be able to plant in these conditions. Now let's come over to weather.gov. Severe storm shift east like a beast. High winds in the northern plains. It's insane. Scattered severe storms are likely along the advancing cold front from the mid-Atlantic into the Carolinas and portions of the southeast like a beast. Widespread strong winds and critical fire weather threats are expected in northern plains. It's insane as a potent storm system moves into the northern plains. A lot of rimy stuff there. Heavy mountain snow will also be possible in the Pacific Northwest, which is the best. Take a look at severe flooding threats here through most of Tennessee. And if you live in one of these maroon areas, click on your county to get the facts or else you're smoking cracks. And here we are over at Euro in Europe. We love when people complain that we don't ever cover the European weather. And we also love when they complain that we don't cover Alaska. So let's just do it. Winter storm warning in Alaska and inland. You're going to be blasted. All right, back to Europe. <laughs> it's not looking good for you in the UK, hey, hey. And we're going to show you why in just a minute. The image we requested. Now, that's insane because we were just had the whole thing parsed up. We made a boo-boo. I really don't know why it's not cool up on that thing. So let me just erase some things and let's just bring it back. There it is. Okay. Does not want to do nothing here. Bear with me. I'm just going to pause it real quick. I'll be right back. Well, we had a major malfunction with the GFS models coming from Tropical Tidbits, but I can assure you that there will be lots of snow in Europe all the way down to central Spain, all of France and Germany in the coming week. It's a tweak. There'll be record snow in the Alps. And if we have time, well, well, we'll just cover it tomorrow for you. How about that? We'll get that map up and we'll make it work. But before we get there, let's talk about it's spring. Ding, ding. 2021. Grow your own already. Grand Solar Minimum much. Thanks, Cap Allon. I'm sure we inspired partially.
this article. I'm working on a new preparedness website, according to CAP. It will be free to access and will hopefully give people a comprehensive understanding of off-grid living, 100% self-sufficiency in order to survive the coming cold times and associated societal collapse. Below is a taster. There's a taster below. Grow your own tomatoes and potatoes. Chitting. No digs. Hilling. Growing. Harvesting. Booming. And surviving and thriving, just like in the olden days. So... Check out Cap's recent article, and let's all follow him over on his new preparedness website, wherever that's going to be. Sea ice thickness up in the Arctic, check in. Going vertical. Uh, entered the multi-decadal average. Nothing to see here in the mainstream, except Arctic ice is building. A couple more months still. Seismic update. No quakes to note. We got activity north of Iceland. Could be associated with that activity on the Reykjanes Peninsula, which we will get to worldwide volcano news update. Nothing spectacular, just the normal stuff. Sabancaya, Nevados de Ruiz, Pacaya to 11,000, Sabancaya to 24. Popo, Cinnaboom popping off. Yeah, what do we got here? Vol there it is. This is volcanic ash at the bung bung. Merapi, we're going to cover that in a second. Boom. A little bit of lava flowing down there, making these people chatter in their shorts. Update on Iceland over here at IcelandGeology.net. Hey, if you got a buck, donate it, please. This guy is a champion. He's been up for since we started the channel. He's had some issues over there in Iceland, and now I'm sure he's getting lots of donations from the locals. But it's nice to give him a little international support if you're from the U.K. or the U.S. Just do it. Just click on the button, Australia. Give him a buck in Australian. Now, here's the current update on the eruption at Glendengalde in the valley. The valley's almost filled. In fact, it's 30 meters deep, and we'll get to that. The eruption seems to be slowly increasing, as we noted 24 hours before most people. The small craters on the left and the webcam have now merged into the large crater. We're going to get to that in a second, so hold on to your knickers. The magma from this eruption has been confirmed as tholeitic and coming from uh, a mantle position which means it's coming up well below continental crust, 17 to 20 kilometers at least. And this can result in what's called a fissure eruption, which is long-lasting in this region historically. It could last for decades or hundreds of years. Could shut off tomorrow. But that is in the low probability category currently. Now, a lake of lava is formed in the Glendingaldach Valley Videos have been posted on Facebook and other social media. We're going to actually see it live. Do not walk on the fresh lava. Can you believe that? Because it will melt through your soles, and then your feet will melt, and then you'll have any feet, and then it'll go to your legs, up to your knees. If someone pulls you out, then you're, you know how that works. You need a wheelchair. The lava at its thickest is estimated now to be 20 to 30 meters deep, which is 60 to 90 feet. If you do the math, multiply by three. There are fluctuations in the eruption. Ha! Who would have known? I thought it would be constant and sustained, you know, like global warming. Sometimes it's slightly more, sometimes it's slightly less, based on the observations with the web, web camera. At Ruv, and we're going to get to that, it seems the mountain is being built by this eruption, and no one knows what that means. Well, it means there's a mountain being built right now before our very lives. On the Reykjanes Peninsula in Iceland. Boom! And here we are live, where you can see both now currently of those cinder cones are merging into one and it seems to be uh, quite a significant amount of lava is now coming out in the evening here. Here we are live and, and at the Glendengalde, newly named volcano potentially in Fagradishval. I'm so fresh with all the Icelandic, it's amazing. I watch that channel. And we are clearly seeing a very, well, I don't, this is not definitely not a lack of activity, but certainly an increase, especially in the width of the lava fields coming out of here. It looks like it's now transitioned from the left back to the right. And the right had been going dead for three days and the left had been growing. And now the right is becoming quite a bit active this evening. In, in fact, in a fantastical way. And it's actually flowing towards the first pinch point where they think it's going to come out of the valley. There's one to the east and one to the southeast. 
both exit points. And we showed them to you last night on magnetic reversal news in the 3D telemetry model that we were spinning around for you. And we'll spin that around for you tomorrow as well. We're going to be doing a live stream over at Magnetic Reversal News early in the, well, in the late morning, 10 o'clock, 10.30. I'll be live at Magnetic Reversal News to answer your questions for all the people that miss out on the evening live streams. So I'll be doing that tomorrow, Sunday Coffee Talk, 10.30, Magnetic Reversal News. Check it out below, a link. Or just go to Magnetic Reversal News on YouTube and subscribe already because we're going to be going live there 10, 10.30 tomorrow morning. Mountain time. My time. So here we can see obvious uptick in the fissure eruption, which is emanating from the mantle. This should be coming out as spillite underneath the ocean, but it is actually spilling out as foliatic basalt on the surface here of Iceland before your very lives. And it's fantastic. I'll leave you links to all this below. That's boom. More news. A project supported by Bill Gates is set to temporarily dim the sun. We've been reporting on this since its inception two years ago. And this is with the help of Harvard and other idiots. A large balloon will be launched in Sweden. That's the only country that would allow it to happen. And spew particles of calcium carbonate to dim the sun. Well, it could be a boon for baking soda companies. Probably not. Now, if you've heard, or if you're one of the 100 people that sent me emails about alien craft coming to Earth, all you had to do was Google shit lit up in the sky at Google, and you would have gotten the answer. So that, there's one problem with people researching facts. But a Falcon 9 rocket making an uncontrolled reentry looked like an alien armada, in fact. In fact, it did. That's it launching. And here it is, reentering. In some guy's backyard. Which it actually does potentially, if he, he would get it into focus here, it's probably just our bandwidth. <laughs> it looks like an alien in Armada. And he's in this cookie cutter McMansion suburban hole, which he thinks is fantastic because his yard is better than his neighbor's. But I can assure you that these houses won't exist in just a few decades. Completely obliterated by any shockwave. I literally could blow these houses down. They're made of particle board and butter. Or horse glue. Whatever you want to talk, call it. Bunch of vinyl siding and other garbage that barely lasts a decade. So, throw away homes. But the footage. Well, there it is. Holy crap of roly. So there it is. Check it out. Alien Armada entering Earth, which is nothing more than the Falcon 9 rocket. Now, researchers warn preservatives used in hundreds of popular foods that aren't actually foods, which is a problem with this headline here, may actually harm the immune system. The most popular foods that have this preservative are Pop-Tarts, Rice Krispie Treats, Cheez-Its. And I guarantee that if we did a cross-cultural study or even a foodological study on people that have eaten this garbage that died from COVID-19, 100%, guaranteed. There is some sort of a connection with the poison food system that is based on big ag, which is connected to the pharmaceutical corporations, which make the chemicals they spray on the seeds and all that other shit. Direct connection. Bear, the number one maker of aspirin, is now in control of 40% of the seed supply because they used to be called Monsanto. And now it's just a big game and a show. It's called the revolving door where all the CEOs of one company become executives and members of the government running the EPA. Thanks, Joe Biden. <laughs> all these politicians are corrupt. All the CEOs of the biggest corporations in pharma and big ag corrupt. And they're poisoning you. They've been doing it for decades. That's big money in making you sick and diabetic. Trust me. Now, the food preservative used to prolong the shelf life of this shit stuff that's not even food, it's garbage. They make organic versions of Pop-Tarts that don't have this. They make, or you can make your own Rice Krispie treats that don't have this. And you can uh, certainly buy organic Cheez-Its that aren't Cheez-Its. Now, the reason these comp big, uh, big food companies use this garbage is to lower costs and to make their stockholders more money. It's not to make you healthier or make it taste better. It's to make it less nutritive 
because they don't give a fuck about you. All they care about is the bottom dollar. Hey, if it tastes like a cheese, it there's no food in it. It's made of cardboard and plastic. I don't give a shit. I need money. There's my rant there. Now, the study published this week in the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health, EWG researchers used the data from the EPA's toxicity. These are the same corrupt people on their own research because the low-level scientists actually do it. And they're like, oh, my God, we better not tell anybody about this. But it gets out. Now, the chemical is TBHQ, and I'm sure you know about BHA and BHT. That used to be the toxins. They're still in foods. But now there's TBHQ, which is a whole exponential level above that carcinogenic bullshit. And it's being used as a preservative. When all they need is rosemary oil, it, ba it barely costs pennies more per pound to use. And it's completely uh, natural. But they just need to save. When we're talking billions of units and a hundredth of a cent per unit, I need that. I need that yacht. I need that fucking yacht, man. I don't give a shit about you or your immune system or COVID-19 or anything. Eat my fucking Cheez-Its. NASA finds alien molecule on Titan never before observed in an atmosphere. This is fantastic. Astronomers have found a strange molecule in the atmosphere of Saturn's moon Titan that has never been detected in any other atmosphere ever before by anybody ever, ever, never, ever. The molecule called cyclo pro Penlinidine is a simple carbon-based molecule. Hey, we all took advanced uh, organic chemistry in graduate school, didn't we? <laughs> it's likely the precursor to more complex compounds that could form or feed possible alien life on Titan. Now, this, and, and this is life forms that we have no idea what they look like. They don't look like anything on Earth, for sure especially if their food source is cycloprendenilidine. No. God knows what they look like. Remember aliens? Yeah. With the multiple mouths. So probably something like that. It's my best guess. Ten interesting accounts of ancient gods and flying vehicles. And take a look at the graphic. If I had ate a few of those special mushrooms that I'm not supposed to put on pizza every night, well, this picture would be fantastic. It's still fantastic otherwise. There appeared a chariot of fire and houses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. It is possible that thousands of years ago, ancient cultures around the globe misinterpreted beings with advanced technology as gods. Looking at the countless descriptions of gods flying in what seem to be modern descriptions of aircraft and spacecraft, this article has singled out 10 fascinating accounts of possible misinterpretations. Are you willing to read? Do you know how to? Link will be below, because I know half you don't know where that is. The forgotten medieval fruit with a vulgar name. And it's like a dirty bunghole berry or something. There it is. This is, now this is insane. This is one of the most popular fruits in the entire world for a thousand years. Maybe more, 5,000. Everyone ate it, all the royal, everyone wanted it. The unique thing about this fruit is you could leave it on the plant and pick it in the middle of winter when there's no fruit anywhere for months and it was the most delicious. In fact, that's only when they picked it after it was rotten. Now, medieval Europeans were fanatical about this strange fruit that could only be eaten rotten. And it was forgotten altogether after we learned how to import bananas and other dumb shit that are really dumb. Why did they love it so much? Because it was free and it grew everywhere and you could get it for free. And why did it disappear? Because of global marketing. It's almost died out, but there are thousands, tens of thousands of people now growing it again. Now, in fact, if you read this article, it's totally fascinating, but I don't want to go too long tonight, but the team was excavating an ancient village of Taskidium, now Ischens, in Switzerland, ruled by a Celtic king who was personally given the land by Julius Caesar. And they found tons of these seeds in the shitters. Yep, they did. There's even pictures of complete scenes of nothing but these bushes around all the elites. 
And the fruit is called medlar. The first record of the medlar's existence is a fragment of Greek poetry from the 7th century BC. Eventually, the fruit is thought to have fallen into the hands of the Romans who brought it to southern France and Britain in 1800 AD. So it's been around the world for thousands of years. Charlemagne included it on a list of plants that were mandatory in the king's many gardens. And nearly 200 years later, the English abbot and writer Elfric of Ensham first commented its rather rude subsequent to the public record. From there, the fruit's popularity steadily increased. It became a staple of medi medieval monasteries, royal courtyards, as well as public spaces and village greens. It featured in Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, and the two-time queen consort Anne of Britain's Book of Hours, a kind of illustrated religious manuscript popular in the Middle Ages. Henry VIII had the medlar planted at Hampton Court and gifted his French counterpart with large quantities. The fruit reached its peak in the 1600s, when it was widely grown across England as ordinary as apples, pears, and mulberries and quince. From this loyal, lofty pinnacle, it underwent a steady decline. It was still widely known until the 20th century, though less celebrated. Then in the 1950s, it was abruptly vanished from the public consciousness altogether. And that's probably because its actual name is like arsehole or something like that. Because when you look inside the fruit here, it looks just like a little bunger, a little bunghole. Isn't that totally gross? That's what, how they thought of fruit. It's like your butthole. Delicious. Bombilius Mayor, or Bombilius Major. Now, I've heard a lot of talk about this, and it's spring, ding, ding. If you're outside and you see something that looks like a bumblebee fly, it is a fly. In fact, it's Bombilius Major, commonly known the large bee fly. We have huge populations here or the dark edge bee fly. It's a parasitic bee mimic. It actually can go into a beehive, lay its eggs, which the larvae grow and they eat the babies in there and no one knows. That's how awesome the bee fly is. It's even more awesome because Bombilius Major is the number one pollinator in the high desert where I am. It's an indifferent pollinator. It doesn't care what it's eating. It goes from plant to plant, tree to tree, eating the pollen and pollinating each plant one at a time. Could pollinate up to 50 species in a single day. That's how prolific these babies are. Bombilius major. Do not kill them. They're, they may be parasitic, like the elites sucking the wealth out of you, but they're important because they're part of the ecosystem. The elites are not. They're not important. Now, another important person is myself who spent a lot of his time in academia. In fact, I, I went all the way to the 21st grade. I went straight up, all the way to the top. And a lot of people are claiming that I don't have any credentials whatsoever and I'm a charlatan. And the only way you can have an account on ResearchGate is if you're a published scientist in academia. There's no other way. They have to check your credentials, check your trans transcripts, and then check your publications. Go ahead, try it. Try to get an account. If you're not an academic, I dare you. So that's as far as I'm going to go. I'll leave you a link below to my research gate with some of the abstracts uh, that I. A lot of uh, the talks that I gave in academia were at the Geologic Society of America regional conferences. And this is where all the cutting edge science that's happened over the last year is discussed between local scientists or regional scientists talking about all our local geologic breakthroughs that we came across in all of our field studies or our lab work, depending on what type of scientist you are. And so I have a couple of abstracts that I was able to find. This is before the, I'm old, so <laughs> before the advent of the internet, I was writing these papers. And check it out if you're interested. There's not a lot to see, but certainly not a lot to back me up. Hope you got something out of the video. Hopefully it was a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in a future that is, well, potentially prosperous, but with a few kinks. Thanks to all our one-time donors, our Patreons, the people that share these videos. You are the key in the cog, in the wheel.
that keeps this party moving forward. We love each and every one of you. Be safe. And that's boo to knowledge. Click on one of the other boxes to gain more knowledge. Be safe. No, 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 no.